So here in a Libre, I have a dynamic spring and I can just completely watch it compress and decompress as I move my plunger up and down. How do we get dynamic springs in this environment? Let's take a look. So here I have a new assembly where we can uh, move this plunger up and down and we need a dynamic spring in there. So let's go ahead and create one. There's a few ways to do it. Uh, you can create a new part right here in the assembly. Uh, I might do that actually. Or you can just create a new part and insert it. But here we are with our new part in our assembly. And I'm immediately going to go back and edit my assembly. We'll go to my new part that I've just inserted and make sure that the reference geometry is showing. Right, and there's our top plane, which I'll say it should be coincident to the top of my plunger, right? So the origin of our part is going to sit right on this surface here. Then I have this axis, which I'll make um, coincident. So it'll share the same axis with my plunger. That way I know that it is constrained in all the important ways. Um, so with my new part now positioned, I'll go ahead and edit it. And I'll activate a sketch on the XY plane. From here, I'll make a circle. And I'll make a construction line that goes from one edge of the circle to the other. We'll add a little uh, coincident constraint right there on their circle center. And in fact, I'll add a horizontal from here to the origin. Now, what distances do I want? I'll make a distance from here to here. I'll make it uh, 1.01 .01 and see if, yeah, we probably need to divide that by 2 right there, right? So our edge is just larger than our plunger edge here. And then if I drag this to about the right size, 0.75 looks to be about right. So I've made the cross section of my dynamic spring, but I don't want to make a helix out of it just yet. Instead, I'll make another sketch on my XY plane. And, and you know what? I could probably um, do this in the same sketch as before, but I don't know, maybe separate sketches can be handier. You can name them in the trees so you know what's what. Uh, I'll go with uh, coincident and make it on this edge here and coincident from here. So the length of this line is the distance between the plunger and the top of this part. Right, that's almost like a little measuring tape that we have. So if this plunger were to change, the length of this line would to change because it's set to be coincident with both edges. We're going to click the box for this to become a parameter. And uh, we can exit now. Okay, so I can even uh, rename this and say measuring sketch or something like that. We'll make a helix with sketch one. And our reference line, of course, will be that center axis. Can't really click it, so we'll go to our tree here. And just like that, we are making our dynamic spring. Now with our dynamic spring, we care about the height and the number of revolutions. The pitch is gonna change as the spring compresses. So we're gonna say height and revolution for a definition. Our height is going to be that driven variable we just made, right? That is the length of our line right there. We know because it says driven. So I'll insert that. And now our spring snaps to the right heights. Finally, revolutions. I'll go with something more like 1.75 and see how that looks. And then uh, we're probably going to care about our end conditions. So we'll give it a flat end condition with a 90 degree transition angle and a 120 degree flat angle. And likewise, we're going to say flat and say transition 90, flat, 120. And OK to that. Now we'll probably want to cut the bottom of our spring. Uh, I've had it sometimes where I get some strange behavior if I cut the spring exactly in half. Not sure what causes that, but I can make a plane and we'll make the plane, you know, one ten thousandths uh, offset from where our ideal cutting plane is, which is so negligible. And we'll make a sketch here. And we'll make a cut. And that, that depth is fine, of course. So we've made our cut, the spring looks okay. Let's make a cut on the top. 
we'll choose our new plane that's just a ten thousandths off and we'll define a plane off of that and we'll do the distance of our driven dimension and again since we're one ten thousandth off uh, then we don't have to worry about you know uh, th this cut being having that same problem because we're not cutting it exactly in half so if you do get weird behavior it's probably because the spring is being cut exactly in half so go 1.75 we'll add a cut at the end of our spring and we'll reverse that so just like that now we have some flat perches and our spring is fitting in our assembly nicely we'll take this and we don't have to show our reference geometry anymore and in fact one more thing maybe I'll edit here and change this part color to red nice bright red springs right a lot of lowering springs on cars are red I'll just save it okay so when I move this plunger up and down let's see what happens just like that you can see our spring uh, changes its pitch like it's being compressed and released so that is how we make dynamic springs again the trick in all of this is going to be uh, the, the length of our line so again when I move my plunger I can go into my measuring sketch the distance of this line uh, changes and so we can use this changing distance to make the changing definitions in our spring so that it can dynamically compress and decompress as we need and, and of course I think I uh, made that in a rollback state so we'll click generate to last feature and again I can play with this as needed one other point that I'd like to make is I have closed and now reopened this assembly and as I move my plunger uh, it's no longer associated right so what we'll do is we'll edit this here and if we run into this problem we're just going to edit the measuring sketch get it active again deactivate generate it to the last feature and go back to our main assembly and now we have relinked the uh, springs ability to keep up with things so that is how we can do that hopefully that helps um, and I think that is everything with this dynamic spring video. Uh, we have some other features here on our uh, base, so perhaps we can create some more interesting videos and content uh, in upcoming videos. Until then, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.